There's our objective. Look at Goofy go. Go, Goofy. Damn, <laughs> Donald. <laughs> Donald, you grinding that rail. Damn, you guys are impressive. Just sipping back and forth. <laughs> Look at them go! They're way over there! Come back! Oh, here comes Donald! Here comes Donald! Vroom. Oh, vroom. <laughs> uh, Goofy's long gone. I have no idea where the Goofinator is. Oh, there he is! Oh, hello! <laughs> They're freaking out over here. Yo, what's going on, everybody? It's Zombie here, and today we're back with another KH3 episode. Hopefully the last one. I mean, hopefully, but not hopefully, right? You know, we love Kingdom Hearts, we to keep going, but we also want to move on to more games and stuff like that. So, hopefully, but not hopefully. But anyways, guys, let's, without further ado, let's just jump into it. All right, here we are. Battle gate number 11. Yes. You ready for this, Ryan? Yeah, how many battle gates are there? 13, and then another one. 14. <laughs> <laughs> it's 13 plus one. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's, well, because the four, 14 one's like a little bonus one, so I'm like, do I just like save that as like a surprise? I'm like, it's not really a surprise. It's like, it's just another battle gate, so. It's, it's, it's like, it's, it's like, ooh, another battle gate. What a surprise. <laughs> ooh, more fights. So exciting. Another blue orb floating. <laughs> Yay for us. I love this. This is my favorite arena, I think. Um, out of the Disney worlds, I should say. Um, I mm. think this is my favorite. I love, like, this bridge with the car stuff. Very cool to me. Huge fan. Big fan. Big, Big Hero fan 6. Much hero, many wow. <laughs> Much big. <laughs> and this thing is like a nuke. Boom! What is, um... What has been your favorite type of Keyblade form? And what I mean by that, there's been like yo-yos, there's been a shield, there's been guns, there's been, you know, a hammer. Do you have like a favorite form like that? Because we'll get into Keyblades later, but I am curious about like that kind of thing, because that's not something we'll really get into with the tier list. I do struggle to remember forms. Um, it is that sort of like that thing you did with Rapunzel and the tower count? Yes, I, I would count that. Sure. Okay, uh, th it'd probably be something like that. Um, that was that, that's cool. like that's like a finisher of the form. So I'm I'm here for that. That one was very cool. It was like a laser tower of death and destruction. Um, yeah. Some some of my favorite like. And maybe you can comment on this too. If you, I know you said you don't remember the forms too well, but I, I know you really like the tune one a lot. Yes. <laughs> that I just showed. Which I like tune one? Um, there you go. I like the Toy Story sort of one. Um, what else was there? I think that's the only ones I really remember. I actually really don't like the Toy Story one, <laughs> which sucks because that's my grinding keyblade. Uh, I I'm not a f obviously you're you're talking from like a viewing standpoint and some people do like the hammer and stuff like that I I find it very uh uh restraining I guess is the word I'll use I like I'm not at my full potential yin yang oh we have to, yeah we're gonna go through the secret reports by the way on this this uh, stream here too so that'll be fun the stream we're not streaming. Yeah, we're live, Rain. <laughs> Look at you know, we're actually live. Surprise. <laughs> oh, hell, this is just going to really break my brain, isn't it? You're just trying to stop it working today, aren't you? Like, Absolutely. Can't you see my Discord status? I already need new batteries. I don't want to need new circuit I went boards to the too. store and I bought them. I got I got you, you 17 triple A's because I know you take a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm a, is that an insult? Um, I, don't, I don't know. I guess it's however you take it. I don't mean it as an insult though, but. Um, I do take a lot. Yeah, I'm very tired all the time and need new batteries constantly. Hey, I'm the one who got four hours of sleep and woke up at 5.49 this morning. <laughs> Earliest recording session ever. It's still a lot. Most days we're still not recording by this time. For those of you, we've been doing all these last episodes together. Um, yeah. It's been a long recording session, but I think it's been fun. I, this hasn't been that taxing on me personally, but maybe that's the energy drink talking. <laughs> that is one, the energy drink talking, and two, we don't have the same problems. <laughs> so it's different in different ways for both of us, um, but it's fun all, all around. Well, it's been awesome that we've had like a lot of cool plot happening too. I think it really helps with... Uh, motivation when it comes to this and, and keeping things going and, and a lot to talk about too which helps with with 
you know, fights like this where we're just sitting here <laughs> beating up enemies, which isn't that interesting in itself, but add, you know, theory crafting or whatever about uh, the box or anything like that is, is pretty cool. And I, and I guess with that said, I know we talked a little bit about the boxer stuff, but do you have any, like, theories that are developed after seeing these cutscenes, especially the secret ones at the end? Uh, um, anything that kind it, of comes to mind? Theories in what capacity? In, like, what way? Like, what, what you think might happen in future games? Like, what's going to become of this Tokyo Sora? <laughs> or um, Riku? Or the Four Tellers? I'm not overly sure what to think about Riku or Sora. Um, it's kind of up in the air for me whether sort of the foretellers are going to be good guys or not. Um, like, they seem like they would be, but just because they're keyblade builders doesn't mean yes, because I mean, they are not existed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, Zigbard, I think he's definitely going to be important, considering that box. Um, so, if, if you don't mind, just I want to kind of get a little bit more on this, because it's, I think it's very interesting. Um, that, so you don't know, who would be the bad guy moving forward then? So if, if you, you said maybe the foretellers, right? But Yeah. So maybe them, but could you think of anybody else who might be the bad guy moving forward? Well, I mean, considering it's been a long time since they've seen Zigbar, because I can't remember how to pronounce the other name. Lucia. Um, <laughs> we'll maybe get you there. Be, maybe it would be a sort of situation where Lucia is the bad guy, and he's like keeping the box from them, and they need the box or something. Or maybe they're the bad guys, and he gets to be a good guy for them. He just doesn't seem inherently like a good guy. He's been a bad guy for so long. In, since he, like he's appeared in this, I can't see him being. Was that his a goal guy? though? Being a bad guy? Was that really what he was there for? Was he there to be bad, or was he there for Keyblade reasons? Uh, probably there the for future. Keyblade reasons. Um, but he's portrayed a bad guy so well that I just can't really see him something else. Also, side rant, I know that little thing that just popped up to like load the screen in was Bearmax's face, but all it looked like was an industrial piercing. So that's where my brain went. <laughs> I I guess. I could see it. I know what that actually is, which is amazing. Normally I am not familiar with that kind of stuff, but I actually do know what that is. Um I wanted to note here too briefly because um I try to give tips for those of you guys who are playing this game, farming all that stuff. For those of you, specifically those of you trying to farm stat boots, if you're trying to increase your magic, increase your your strength, increase your defense, you need hungry shards to do that on every single one of those. The this is the best place to farm hungry shards. You also get withering or crystals. Sorry, I've been I mean crystals replace shard with crystals everywhere. <laughs> uh, crystals, and that's that's why you get withering crystals. You get. Uh, Lightning crystals or electric crystals, like lightning crystals are called crystal, lightning. Um, and then blaze crystals, I believe you can get here as well. So you get a lot of stuff. This is the best farming location. You also need a shit ton of uh, wellspring gems. And you also get a butt ton of that here. This is your number one grinding spot. You'll have to go other places to get certain materials. But aside from that, this is your main grind because you need a lot of gems for wellspring and you need a lot of crystals for hungry. Um, so just want to throw that out there for you farmers out there. It also, you know, <laughs> use that information as you will if you got... <laughs> you were thinking of actual farmers when I said that, right? Yes. Yeah, I could tell. <laughs> I heard you... I tuned back into what you were saying probably when you said farmers. And I was just seeing you, like, come get your taters. <laughs> I'm just like, fuck. This is where Why you get you, your lightning crack taters. <laughs> See, this is what happens. They're, I get so distracted. <laughs> They're booting, up, they're booting up their PlayStation 5 in their barn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cuddling with their cows. <laughs> um, I know that's I'm not what sorry. farmers do, everybody. I'm just being extra with it. <laughs> it just... He's stereotyping. Um... <laughs> yes, I, we, I, I live in Wisconsin, everybody. There are so many farmers here. We used to be the dairy state until damn California had to come and beat everybody at every goddamn thing. Assholes. Sorry, I love... You, I'm sure you people out there are very nice. <laughs> Yeah, a lot of you like guys, I, anyways, but... <laughs> I feel like I interrupted what you were saying with the fact that I was laughing at farmers. <laughs> I, I was pretty much done. Nobody okay. else wanted to hear what I had to say, anyways. 
<laughs> this is just me slopping in the background. It's like, farmers. All, all I was saying was if you guys need those materials for other ingredients for farming something, it's valid there too. It's not just stat boost. <laughs> and that was that. It's that one guy just watching this. Like, we get it, Zombo. Shut your trap. Shut your damn mouth, Zombo. I don't watch you for lore tips. You suck. Or game tips, I mean. I know how to play this damn game. Nobody asks you for your garbage opinion. <laughs> Sambo sucks at video games. <laughs> Sambo sucks at video games. He's the worst. I saw how many times he died in those boss fights. Pro codes or not, you garbage man. <laughs> <laughs> I love that joke. And I mean the profession. <laughs> You're actually a garbage man. <laughs> <laughs> Just accuses you of not being an architect. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You lied to us. You're not an architect. You just say that as a front so you don't embarrass yourself. Actually, mad respect the garbage man out there. Yeah, like, definitely. That's. That's. I, I appreciate it a lot. This world would be a very dirty place without you guys. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Because... I've never understood um, people having a go at that profession. Or anything like that because it's someone's got to do it and you're not doing it and they're doing it <laughs> fun stupid dumb quick fact about me is when i was in junior year or maybe it was sophomore year i can't remember now of high school um for i can't remember exactly why but my i gave myself the title of garbage man but i wasn't just garbage man i was and i have to say it in this voice the garbage man <laughs> like that that was who I was. I was the garbage man. I just remember for whatever I can't remember the context of why I just remember being the garbage man it, it, It's badass. I mean just this come on. You can't tell me that that doesn't sound like a badass I mean it kind of does but also um, Zombo is better <laughs> Well, thank you <laughs> yeah. The garbage That's man it. rated R starts fighting <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like a I can't say that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Don't say bad words, Ryan. I wasn't going to say a bad word. It's just going to be a bit too dark for this video game. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've said a lot of things in this video game. <laughs> We've said a lot of things. This guy's like knocked yeah. out right here. Uh, it, there are some things you just keep it to yourself, so I'm gonna keep it to myself. Uh, that um, is all up to you. If if worst came to worst, I would just censor you. <laughs> this future zombie does not want to censor you, though. Yeah, moment's gone anyway, so shut up. Zombo sucks video games. <laughs> the garbage man coming to get him is a surprise personality. <laughs> Rain has a lot of dark thoughts. <laughs> oh, yeah, she listens to depressing music. <laughs> What, what? This is the depressing music? Is that what you said? No, I've been listening to depressing music. Oh, what's that? <laughs> hey, I, I hadn't listened to the album, so I've been listening to that album. And it's, that thing is depressing, so it's, what can I do? Um, not listen to it. <laughs> but no. if you like it, then that's good. I, I don't mind depressing music. I, I don't mind it. A lot of I times like it depends on the mood, but lots of times, unless if I'm in a mood, Music is music. <laughs> if I like the sound of it, I like the sound of it. I don't really get all emotional with it or anything. Oh yeah, that's fair enough. I just report like, that some music lately. Um, so is it going to be anything like the reports we did in the first game? Because to tell you what, I still have PTSD. Yes. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Answer is yes. All right, we still have one more to do though. So before we get there. Before you just completely implode my brain and I short circuit and you just hear dial up tones. Well, there's lore bits that you don't have yet, so. She'll be very exciting. Hey, honestly, I don't think you need the energy drink. I think I need the energy drink. <laughs> I should take another sip of that now that you mention it. All right, I hope that was interesting for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you zoom in and add in comical slurping noises. Oh, thank you. That's a good idea. Future Zombo, get on that. Um, in case, yeah, I know you're not aware of this, Ryan. I wrote piss in a can on my <laughs> energy drink, which I have been showing people through these episodes. <laughs> so, so I have you... been I've been drinking piss in a can. Yes. 
<laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I should do with that information. I mean, it seems on point for you. So... Here's what I'm gonna do, everybody. I'm gonna eat this this food that I told you is the best meal, because I can. And stuffed qual. Live by your word, don't just preach it. Exactly, Rain. Preach it. <laughs> preach what I'm preaching. XP, increase the XP you earn in combat. Oh, don't talk about food, I'm hungry. <laughs> I don't care about keeping that my favorite. I'm actually not too hungry right now, which is very surprising. But here we go. Oh. Last battle gate. I've been up for hours and I haven't eaten. It was my fault. But... Here we go. Look at this guy. Oh, hello. You've got so... two like, cleavery things and a hole in your chest. So this here rain is the super boss. <laughs> so we might be here for a while. <sighs> <laughs> I hope you're ready to invest the next two hours, Ren. Please don't. I'm, not, I'm, uh, mm. I'm kidding. This this boss is, in my opinion, one of the easier ones. But I, feel, I know I you had limited time today. I thought that's why we started so early. That is why. That's why I woke up at 5:49. Uh, yeah. So well, that's also why I gave myself so many hours to do this <laughs> because I wanted to make sure we get through everything today. I hate so. to warn me before. <laughs> It warned you about what? The long session or what? The length that we would be sitting here. You said four. Mm -hmm. we I did say fifth, four. With a possibility of a sixth. <laughs> is this... This is the fifth right now? Yes. Guys, I, I, I have been struggling so hard to keep track of how many we've been doing. He really has. He's been... He was so hyper in the videos and going from one thing to another and being like, oh wait, I was doing this, and oh wait, yeah, I was talking about this, and it's been very entertaining to watch, but like, in between, you're like, we're on five, right? And I'm like, no. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm gonna split into two now, just to make you wrong. <laughs> I never actually physically checked, but... You should just trust me, because I, I should I know. I do. <laughs> I do trust you. Thank you. Know. you. This time. Next time I you can't promise you anything. But <laughs> why not? I'm trustworthy. Uh, are you? I think so. I like to be. You're pretty. If you're someone, if you're someone I don't like, then don't trust me. But if I like you, then you can trust me. <laughs> oh. So for those of you. Oh God. Okay, he knocked me out. That's not very good at all. Oh. For those of you who haven't been using air stepping at this point, highly recommend it. What I just did there was air stepping, getting across the arena. Um, so yeah, just wanted to point that out there. When it comes to more difficult bosses, definitely use it. I mean, this guy is definitely more difficult than some, but I, I never found the super boss that challenging. I don't think I died on my first playthrough of this when fighting this guy. For those of you who do not know this boss, you know, it, I, I'm not like trying to, I, I just want to make it very clear that throughout this whole entire playthrough, I know I say, oh, this is easier, oh, I never died here or whatever. Everybody's play style is very different. Everybody, you know, experiences things a little bit differently. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not saying that to like be like, oh, if you die here, you suck at the game. Cause like, I mean, look at me. Would you consider me great at the game? I wouldn't. <laughs> I, I, I've had just, I've had several deaths. I admit that. I'm trying to get. Say you're I was, good at the game. You'd say I'm good at the dead game. Yeah. Well, thank you. You are you are the only person I have watched play the game. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> um, also, quick question: Can I just um, assume that everyone that Xehanort recruited had been noughted? Yes. Okay, good. Because when I was circling my questions that had been unanswered, there was like a few that are like, is this person naughty? And I'm like, I can get this out in one fell swoop and just be like, was everyone a mule? He's trying to air step. Damn you. Oh. All right, signal. Zombo shall not airship. Airship? What the fuck is that? I can't speak. I'm getting an airship now? Nice. Getting an airship. Yeah. I don't know why, why or where it's coming from. Okay, I, I need to stop. I keep trying to air step and it's kind of messing me up a little bit. 
<laughs> I, I, you mentioned air stepping, and now you're like, I must use it. <laughs> well, the, here's the problem, everybody. Is I'm using it at the wrong times. <laughs> I'm using it as he's running towards me and starts whacking me and takes out half my health. <laughs> like right now, that's a good time to use it. It's like um, sort of the horned devil depiction. Like you had the Xehanort goat depiction, and now you got this guy. <laughs> and this thing. I don't know. Is that a, what is that in the sky? Is that a Mickey face? I swear if that's a Mickey face, I'm going to lose it. It's a heart. <laughs> it's a heart. It's a lucky emblem. It? Sora, quickly, take a picture. <laughs> All I could see was a couple round edges, so I wasn't really sure what I was looking at. Nice. Woo. Let's go. Awesome. First try. A little struggling Hold there, on. but... I was probably using as, as soon as you said this guy's a super boss, I thought flashbacks to Lingering, Lingering Well. well. <laughs> yeah, oh, like, absolutely. Oh, no. <laughs> no, I, I knew it wasn't going to be that bad. I, was, I wasn't sure I was going to get on the first try because, quite frankly, I didn't remember that boss. And I'll tell you why I didn't remember that boss. It's the same reason I said earlier. It's because I think I beat it in one drop. So <laughs> I did not really <laughs> remember him. Um, sorry for those of you who have died to that guy. <laughs> Again, not my, not what you should be taking out of that. Um, all right, so this th item that we just got is the one I want to throw on here because this has MP to go, which means your your uh, MP regenerates even faster. Which for difficult bosses, if you guys struggle on that guy, that'd be a great one to have MP to go on. So if you don't already, definitely put those the flan one on, put that Mickey class on. Hopefully you got those items already, and uh, look all smexy and sexy up in here. All right, so this is what I've been doing wrong, is I should be having these on auto-reload so they refill my high potions so I don't have to keep adding them all the time. But we're done with these. That is the post-game complete. So that was it. That was that was it. The, uh, the post-game in this game, as many of you guys out there are probably aware, and if you guys can't tell by what we just did here, very lackluster. I mean, yes, if you didn't get all the lucky emblems, you can go around and get those. You know, go beat the flans if you didn't already get the ultimate keyblade. Things that, you know, I did already. But, I mean, if you've done that, like I did that all before, there's nothing else for me to do now except get to level 100, you know, and prepare for the DLC, I, I guess. All right, Rain. Are you for some lore tilly bits? The, the secret things? The secret reports. <coughs> excuse me. Oh, God, excuse me. Oh, God, excuse me. It's the piss, man. <laughs> Oh, God. Here we go, everybody. Here with the secret reports. Start from number one. We got all the way down to number 13. I was I was like, did I miss getting one for the 14th battle gate? But no, we just got that item. And we got a pat on the back. Yay. <laughs> so, secret reports number one. Let's just jump into it. <clears throat> Am I alive? I awoke in a cell alone until the researchers came with the, their tests and their prodding to uncover my identity. I had no answer to offer them four friends and a key that is the sum total that that is the sum total of my memory that's, that's a weird wording there in my opinion i could not even recall my name i was simply called x there my own solace was the time i spent talking with the two boys who would visit me from time to time one day a man came to take me from the prison i could not see him for the darkness save save wait i could not see him for the darkness save that he wore it, an eye patch okay i could not see him because of the darkness because he but i did see an eye patch essentially even now years on i feel no closer to understanding who or what i am may my heart be my guiding key unknown any thoughts on that one yes multiple <laughs> good um <laughs> So, I patch man Zigbar, clearly. There's no one else with an eye patch. I would um, agree. Um, two boys, that has to be Axel and Isa, which means this is the girl that they visited from time to time. And I she agree. just mentioned, she mentioned four friends and a key. Yes. And the only four friends I can think of is that the, the four people, like. The four tellers? Well, the four tellers. Does that mean this is Ava? <laughs> Could be. That's. Reasonable, I suppose. Uh, if, if, because uh, the four friends would be then uh, the other four that came in the graveyard, it would just be excluding like Lushu and the Master yeah. of Masters, which I, I always think of them a little bit separate from the foretellers. So, yeah, same. that's reasonable. I, I would, I would 
see that as the original explanation. And uh, we can also see the researchers are obviously Ansem and his apprentices prattling, specifically Xehanort. I don't know if, I don't think Ansem the Wise was a part of her specifically. Maybe at the start, but he stopped the experience and Xehanort kept going. I think. I'm trying to remember exactly, but something like that. Either way, that was where she was researched on. Yeah, yeah she was, she's known as X. So from this point on, just we can refer to her as X instead of just mystery girl. Okay. Report number two. Mark of Mastery Journals. Some days have passed since I set off on my journey to prepare for the Mark of Mastery examination. Ericus asked for leave to undertake the same pilgrimage, but apparently I am to be the first to tour the worlds written of the of in the old fairy tales. Until a few short years ago, I had known only my world, a speck of land surrounded by sea, but how I dreamed of, yearned for the world beyond, and granted uh, guidance from the future, I left the nest behind. So that's, I, I'm giving you context was, Young Xehanort going back to himself to set him on his course. Or not young Xehanort. Ansem coming to him, setting him on his journey. Um, okay. As I, as I threaded a path to my master's side, I came in contact with darkness in many forms. I knew even then, as by instinct, terrifying as its power was, it could be harnessed, mastered. Arrakis is a, a blue blood descendant from the very first matches in the ages of fairy tales, but I did not come this far to indulge in ad adulation? Adulation? I guess. Sure. I will be his peer, his equal, and to do that I must learn to wield the power born from both darkness and light in proper balance. Xehanort. That's kind of his journey, so. Um, and that's like young Xehanort's journey. Yeah, so he, it's his mark of mastery time. Xehanort. So saying that, you know, a version of himself came to meet him on Destiny Islands, which then sent him off to meet his Keyblade Master, whoever that is, and uh, be a peer of Ericus. And then they were, you know, I, and uh, the key point here, which is very interesting, Ericus is a blue bud, descendant from very first match masters in Ages of Fairy Tales. So that's yeah. a very interesting line. Um, more, more lore for Ericus. Any other comments, questions there? Not really. I'm not fully grasping um, the bit about who sent him on the way to his master. Do you remember in... I think we saw it in Dream Drop. We saw a young Xehanort on Destiny Island and Brown Roby came to him. Yeah. And whispered in his ear and told him the things he wants to hear. Basically, you know, setting him forth to seek out more things, which is yeah. like a huge reference to the Seeker of Darkness. <laughs> um, and then that is what led him to wanting to get off the island. And so then he does do that. It was this is the thing that's been talked about. And I, you know, you constantly just like etched, etched, etched. It was etched in his heart to leave the island because time travel leaves an etching on your heart that then, you know, you don't cognitively think about it but it sends you on that journey you know it's just etched in your heart you're just i guess if you want to use the word destined to go down that path you're just gonna go down that path like you cannot change that it's etched and you just go which is yeah. a nice way to say you know you can't change history <laughs> except if you're sore <laughs> okay and ericus descended from who i just oh. it's uh, uh keyblade masters of of a time of fairy tales is all it said. Yeah, I couldn't remember what it said. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, uh, it's a blue blood descended from the very first masters in the age of fairy tales. All right, number three, experiments of the hob. Notes on subject X. Expert excerpt one. Subject was found in the central square shortly after dawn. So like they were female, approximately fifteen years old. Oops. Oops, oops, oops. Close your eyes. There we go. <laughs> uh, uh, da -ba -da -ba -da, where was I? Uh, a female, approximately 15 years old. After seven days' observation, she spoke her first words, but could not provide a name. Subject exhibits signs of profound amnesia and displays concern about 
which world this is. Her words suggest that she departed from her home world with others, though she cannot recall the name of her erstwhile companions. All efforts to explore those memories have met with a rejection response. After his initial experiments on me, Ansem the Wise ceased his research into the heart, but his, his hand stayed by some fear I cannot fathom. Yet this new subject is like me, devoid of memories. She is the perfect example upon which to continue my master's work. She too could benefit from it. By traversing the heart, we have a direct path into memory. Memories are hearts. Uh, I myself have begun to reclaim my lost past thanks to those these very experiments. Who is she? Whence has she come? These are questions no scientist could ignore. In the words she muttered, may your heart be your guiding key. Xehanort. So very interesting, like, parallels between, like, Terranort and her there in terms of the amnesia yeah. bit. Um, but we got a little yeah. bit more information. So how, how, um, how, how's your theory holding up then with the Ava? What do you think? Uh, kind of getting a little stronger, I guess, with, like, the guiding key thing. Yeah, I, 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 I don't know how old Ava is. She doesn't seem that old to me. Like, I don't think she doesn't sound that old to me. So, you know. 15 doesn't yeah. sound too off. <laughs> it doesn't. <laughs> All right. Experts of the heart know some subject at Xbook 2. Subjects' memories have not returned, and our conversations remain less than lucid. What fragments can be gleaned invoke a begone world, like one out of fairy tales? As improbable as it seems, the question may not be where she has come from, but when. If she truly has crossed through time, the prospect of probing her heart is all the more compelling. My pilot studies used a handful of subjects, but none possessed the fortitude to endure them. Ultimately, all suffered mental collapse. I knew it would be a heavy blow to lose a subject as unique as, her, as she. Upon discovering the tests I had been conducting, my master demanded that I cease my work immediately and destroy what research I have compiled. Worse still, he ordered the release of my remaining subjects. She is gone. Where is subject act now? Has wise Master Ansem hidden her away? Whatever the cause, the case, I will not be dis deterred. I will take her place as the first subject in the grand experiment to come. Xehanort. So, I mean, this answered my question before, I guess, of uh, Master Ansem did not know anything about this. It ordered him to cease the work, and he did it behind his back, and then found out, and then yada yada. Yeah. Um... But yeah, very interesting. So she got released and whatnot. All right. Murmurs? More murmurs? Expert one? Memoirs. Excerpt. Memoirs, thank you. Ex excerpt one. The castle was a wonder wonderland to us children. Within its walls, Ansem and the Wise conducted his research, and the fruit it bore allowed everyone outside to live in peace and happiness. That alone was enough to stoke our interest. Though not all the rumors that escaped its walls were so benevolent. Um, by night, the muffled sounds of human wails emerged. There was talk of a dangerous human ex experimentation. Lee and I couldn't help but hatch a plot to steal inside and sate our curiosity. The two who stood guard at the gates were researchers themselves, though you wouldn't think it to see them, massive and barrel-chested as they were, and slipping past the duo was only the first hurdle it proved one not easily cleared but we were found and tossed out on our ears time and time and again on that day we we finally secured our entry we descended the long spiral stair at the heart of the castle to find a dark space below lined with cages there wasn't a light enough to see if it were inhabited and we were in no position to call out to any occupants within. Yet we could feel it, a definite presence there in the black. Terror washed over us, and we immediately regretted coming. But just as we turned to flee, we heard the faintest of voices. The urge to run was nigh overpowering, but someone or something beckoned us on. There was there, framed by a tennis silver light, we found her. Syax. 
So just to point out this spiral staircase, you remember in KH2 we had that long scene of Xemnas walking down stairs that lasted a way too long of a time. Yeah. It led down to cells. That is yeah. the cells where young Zay or not young Zayar, Apprentice Zayar was doing his experiments, you know, away from the pry guys of Master Zayar, or not Master, <laughs> Anson the Wise, <laughs> sorry, and yeah. was hiding it down there and doing his stuff down there. Uh, and that's just okay. him finding her. <laughs> Memoirs expert, excerpt two. It was too dim to make out her features. We spoke to her in hushed whispers. Who is she? Why was she imprisoned here? She had no answers for us, had no memories at all. She was an enigma, but I knew I wanted to help her. And so we continued our infiltrations. Most of them stopped short at the castle gates. When we did manage our way inside, we spoke with her. That was all the comfort two children like us could offer. But Lee had other ideas. He was determined to free her. We slipped into the castle that day, knowing only that we wanted with all our hearts to save her. But we didn't find her inside on that day or the next, or any of our sub of subsequent visits. Had she been moved? Had we simply imagined her? Lee and I knew there was only one way to be certain. And so we stand before the castle gates today, not as trespassing children, but in order to become Ansem the Wise's newest apprentices, Syax. Lots of lore behind them being in there. Yeah. <laughs> On the replica program and reanimation. Following my... I have no idea Eraser? I have no idea what that word is. Following my blank. <laughs> and my... My recompletion as a human, I did not awaken right away. Perhaps the damage was exceptionally grave. Even after waking, I, I remained in bed, pondering on my next course of action. In my work on the replica program for the organization, I produced some 20 vessels. Most of them, the early results of fail were failures. Not one of them granted a number. Uh, the first success to emerge was, was from that early lot, was the... Riku replica. Subsequently, Xion, number I, which, you know, we learned that if you put the X in there, you get Xion. There's like a confirmation for that. What was essentially indistinguishable from a natural human, though she became unstable due to the... Wait, if, okay, sorry, I've, I've tripped out there. Due to the influences <laughs> of others. Uh, using those two as my foundation, I worked on a, to construct a number of nigh-perfect replicas. But just as they neared completion, my efforts were cut short. I suspect Ans uh, uh, Xehanort aims to use both the initial lot as well as the unused replicas from my later work. I arose today and decided to walk out to the square, my first outing in some time. Yet my stroll was interrupted by a surprising visitor appeared with an unexpected offer. Though younger than me... He's, he'd risen to become Xemnas' or, or right hand. I accepted his terms and became a nobody once more. Easier to gain access to the old replica program that way. Whatever it takes to atone. Vexen. What are your thoughts on that? Is, who is he speaking of as the right hand? Is that Syax? Mm -hmm. I don't know. One of Xemnas' right hands... I mean, if we remember back to, like, KH2, I think, like, his big dogs were Ziggy, Syax seemed pretty high up there. I, I would say those two are probably the biggest two. The real organization. The best name we ever came up with. <laughs> <laughs> Xehanort seeks to gather 12 vessels, which, together in with his his true actual self, he considers the real Organization 13. Now that he has the numbers he needs, Demix and I are, tr are being treated as reserves. Several others who served Xemnas in the old organization have followed the same course as mine, electing to abandon their newly restored humanity and rejoin the real organization as nobodies. But not Xemnas. Xemnas cannot exist in the present because there is already a Xehanort here. The old man in charge. The old man's humanity prevents his heartless and nobody, others vanquished in the past, and his younger self from being denizens of this time. 
To circumvent this, Xehanort is using the prototype replicas I created in the past as containers, plucking, excuse me, his other selves, hearts, from the time they existed. Xehanort ordered me to refine, again, I have no idea how it worked with uh, Xemnas, so he does not have a heart, <laughs> ordered me to refine the prototypes to make them closer still to the real thing, perfecting my creations so they may house true flesh and blood human suits, my own purposes as well. All that remains for my atonement is to devise a way to pass on as many of the vessels as I can to those who truly deserve them. Vexen. So... Yeah, so we get kind of confirmation that those guys are plucked from a different time and plucked into these replica bodies. Um, and Xehanort is, is, is a real boy! <laughs> uh, anything else here that was that interesting? Anything you have questions on, I guess? So his atonement, is that to fix what he did in the past? Yeah, the research. I, I mean, even I, I think it might even encompass like what he did to Sora and friends, especially his master, uh, Ansem, going behind his back and doing this research yeah. and whatnot. I, I think most of it's experimenting on children. Maybe some of it's to do with like the Sora and friends, but yeah, that'd be the gist. Ansem code conceptious expert one. <laughs> I have poured over the data my master entrusted to Riku. Here I offer my preliminary conclusions. I'm just trying to figure out who this is. I probably know as I can keep going. With Sora's hearts, uh, within Sora's hearts are three compartmentalization. Oh, I know what this is. Compartmentalized, compartmentalized boxes. Each containing a heart of another. One box holds Roxas. Another holds a second heart that has been with Sora nearly as long. Uh, the third has its heart for much longer. These hearts are, have melded with Sora's, which I, again, I do not understand how his heart could get separated if he got his heart ripped out of him because they were all melded with Sora's. If his heart left, the other guys left with him, which means they would have stayed with Sora, which means his heart didn't leave and go into Roxas, the only body that's, that's why not why freaking Ventus uh, Roxas look the same. Just trying to solidify that point even more to you people out there who disagreed with me. <clears throat> Anyways, uh, those hearts have melded with Sora's and no longer have voices of their own. Any attempt to uh, mechanically extract them could prove as dire for Sora as what caused him to become a heartless in the first place. First, a vessel for each heart must be readied. Then, a spark of some sort is required to induce its waking. Obviously, the ideal situation is to restore each heart to its own body, but whatever the case for the two unknown individuals, Roxas possesses no such thing. The same is true for Nomine. Uh, who we believe resides in Kyrie's heart. Still, if alternative bodies can be secured for them, all their hearts require is to be awakened is a, that spark. People they cared for and who cared for them, who can show them the way home. Oh, lovey dovey. Complete and perfect digitalization of, a, of the heart is impossible. We can only hope to partially reconstruct it. Thus, I see no way forward but to extract the hearts we so desperately need directly from within Sora. Fortunately, the data stored in Twilight Town contains a near-perfect record of the memories of those who live there, and for Roxas and Nomine especially, this is crucial. Yeah. Yenzo. Oh, I thought this was Ansem. Oh, why? It's Yenzo. Cool. Research I knew that. boy. <laughs> Research boy. <laughs> Ansem code conceptious. Maybe I'll do like a different voice for Yenzo. <laughs> As for how to contain the, their hearts, the only conceivable option is the replicas. If we transfer in the digital memories from the Twilight Town archive, the replicas should be able to reconstruct from individual human appearances with near-perfect results. Then their hearts only need to, the right spark to wake them, so they may find their way out of Sora and Kyrie and into those, those newly made bodies. The replica program was truly revolutionary, but it was incomplete at the time of the old organization's dissolution. Without Evan, we are. V uh, how are we to further the research? We need at least three replicas: one for Roxas, one for Nami, and one for the unknown stowaway within Sora's heart. Because uh, I didn't mention the last one. That's Shion. Yeah. These are difficult uh, quadraries, <laughs> but um. as I. As I work through quandaries? my, 
I, that is a weird I, word. I have no idea. But as for as I work through my master's data, I find myself remembering the taste of ice cream. <laughs> when I was a boy, he would bring me some when we took walks together. There will be time to regret my betrayal later. For now, my focus must be on restoring Roxas and now on improving my master. I had good intentions. Yenzo. Alright, observation next verse one. I have seen it through. The Keyblade War unfolded exactly as written in the, on the lost page. Now the Keyblade and Master entrust me, entrusted to me must be bequeathed to another. Five Union leaders have been chosen from the surviving Dandelions. I will pass the Keyblade on to one of them, and then continue watching the future unfold. Yet it seems that someone has pulled off old Switcheroo. One of the five is an imposter. Someone the Master did not choose. They represent a virus in the program he so carefully wrote. The virus has begun a strange undertaking, a reckless plot to allow the Five to escape to another world line. Surely, such a thing can't be possible. We're talking about the same trick that allowed the Dandelions to transfer to other world lines after the Keyblade War. But these children are no masters. They have the means, unless, of course, a certain Lady of Magic Someone here from the future knows more than I do. The whole union leader thing was supposed to be by the books. Are those are these new events just another phase in the master's grand plan? Unknown. What do you think of that one? That's a heavy one. That uh, hurt my head. Um. So, Keyblade War happened. Five dandelion masters survived, but one of them like swapped out with the actual master and as an imposter well well he said that they're not masters but five union leaders yeah, were chosen leaders, sorry and but someone swapped out and then he says someone's an imposter someone that the master didn't choose to be there so okay. one of those people is not meant to be there post keyblade or and then he refers to them as a virus a reckless plot and yada 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 they're talking about escaping another world line but um any any theories with this at all that you have i'm just wondering if the switch would have like affected the switch wouldn't affect the book because it's being watched at the time isn't it in theory, yeah. But it was said that the master didn't pick that person. There's some lady mentioned. Yes. Yes. At the at the end here. Uh, they haven't the means, unless, of course, a certain lady of magic summoned here from the future knows more than I do. That be? Who would that be? Hopefully it's not Maleficent. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> um, I guess any, any theories with this at all? Or any new ideas? Or not really? Not really. It's like a bit hard to incorporate all the other information that you have. It's like you've got all these pages that fit together and now you have this one page that's got new information on it. And you're like, well, I don't know where that fits yet. <laughs> well, let's keep going. Let's see what we got. Observation X for two. Even on a world line with no Keyblade War, peace is but a dream. In the absence of us and our master, a darkness arrived, one that shall surely lead the world to yet another demise. Amid the chaos, I bequeath my Keyblade to one of the Union leaders, just as the master instructed. I watched as the five were sent to another world line, at the no small cost, ensuring the line of Keyblades wielders will live on, and now the Keyblade-less, now Keyblade-less, I must depart this land and fulfill my final task. This means casting my own body aside and sojourning my heart in a vessel after vessel, as many times as it takes. But I will continue gazing upon each passing era, one onto the next. In time, it will be years or decades, centuries or millennia. I will meet the five once more. Somewhere in this cynical history of bequeathings, a chosen one will appear and reenact the Keyblade War. 
when this scapegoat arrives and takes my keyblade in hand, that will be the time to take the stage and finish my role. The Lost Masters will awaken. Oh no, I mean, obviously that's Lucia. The last one was Lucia, this one's Lucia. It's, it's talking about bequeathing the keyblade, yada yada yada. It's not take a rocket science test. What exactly is a wild line? Um... Mm-hmm. <laughs> Can't answer it, okay. Not gonna get um, into it. <laughs> I don't know. So, and um, he had to, so he, like we said before, he gave the keyblade to someone after it because it was his. Mm -hmm. And then once he did that, he watched from the sidelines as it got passed down to person to person. And then obviously he had to work with Xehanort to sort of get it bequeathed back to him. Mm -hmm. So he could have it. Not necessarily, necessarily bequeathed back to him, but to just get his thing back. Because his, his role was basically to reenact the Keyblade War, by the sounds of it, and once that was achieved, then it was done, and Xehanort was gone, so it's like, Keyblade's mine again. I mean, let's be honest, if it had any loyalty, it's probably more loyal to Lushu than it would be to Xehanort. Yeah. Like, it, it does bode the question, could Zigbar at any point just yoink that Keyblade <laughs> from him? <laughs> it's an interesting yeah. question, which I don't know that we'll ever... I mean, we won't, I mean... Unless we get some weird flashback thing, but it, there would have been some weirdness happening between Xehanort and Zigbar at that point, if that was the case. So um, yeah. I doubt we'll ever find that out, but it's an interesting idea anyways. All right. Last one. Observations expert excerpt three. It seems this body, this name will be my last. The lives I have lived over the ages could fill volumes. But for now, I must focus on what matters most. The Keyblade Ward has been success. The Keyblade has been successfully passed down generation to generation and it seems a keyblade master devote to the darkness may finally arise until now i have watched over the course of events from a distance perhaps this time has come to inter this time has come to intervene i need only play the role of a fool desirous of the keyblade's power i will don the mask of his ally in order to keep watch over my keyblade from close by the gazing eye a keyblade forged from the eye of the Master of Masters. He pass it to me, as I have to others, and through it, he can see the future. All that will ever come to pass, spanning the ages and body after body after life after life. My task has been to keep vigil over the eye as it passes from hand to hand. It has been a long time, longer than I care to express. But now, at last, the Keyblade War has begun and Kingdom Hearts will open, a true and complete Kingdom Hearts, born of the clash between darkness and light. I will soon be reunited with my old companions, and in that moment, my long vigil will reach its end. He will return. Unknown. Lucia. He will return. <laughs> he will return. Who is he, Rain? Master of Masters? That would be a very good guess if you asked me. <laughs> that is what I would also agree with. And then presumably, maybe the guy in the end of the last scene here, the secret cutscene in Tokyo. <laughs> yeah. In Tokyo. Um, but yeah, so I guess any thoughts? I think the last three were very interesting because you get to hear more about Lushu, which, again, I find him an extremely interesting character. Like, he's so interesting, which is... I mean, I'm gonna. I'm not gonna lie. It gave already amazing Zigbar even more interest to me, which is definitely why he's so high on my list of organization members. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I just wanted you to be aware of this, Ren, because obviously we're very far through the series now. Like I said, this was the conclusion of Phase One of Kingdom Hearts, and you now have so much information that I had all the way back to like KH One, things I knew about things, and you know we see Zigbar and. Uh, KH2, you're like, ooh, Ziggy, I'm over here like, this is Lushu. <laughs> <laughs> like, I know who this guy is. And it's it's been cool for me because I have not gone through these games again since playing Kingdom Hearts 3 when it first came out. So now being able to go through these games and like seeing things like, oh, this is Lushu and stuff was kind of interesting for me as well and seeing where is it hinting at certain things? When does Zigbar know more than he should? And I think the scenes they added to Kingdom Hearts 2, which we specifically skipped, have a lot of implications there. 
Not that you'd ever get Lushu from that, in my opinion. You could, I'm not saying you couldn't, but it'd be pretty unlikely if you ask me. Um, but he does know a lot, and it's a little bit suspicious, and I almost think they... It's almost a retcon, like they, they made, when they added this into the Final Mix version, they're like, let's start, you know, I want him to be important, so let's throw this in there. Because uh, yeah. let's make him be something that's really important. But uh, yeah, so very interesting. Well, I guess what were your thoughts on these reports in general? It's nice to know more. Um, I mean, it, it's also interesting to like see what I think about it, like myself. Because hearing the first one, it's like, that sort of sounds like Avar because she's missing and I want to know where she is. And it's nice knowing more about um, Zigbar and his motives and hearing reports about the um, replica stuff was nice as well because the replicas are really important <laughs> yeah and if i hadn't uh, given you like the specific direct information i mean rox has kind of talked about the replicas a little bit and then that just really solidified how it was made all possible there um the yeah. the, the the questions that kind of remain with that stuff as we kind of brought up in previous stuff is the uh the fact that the old like demix for example vexen they're kind of norted still so like in some ways they aren't like still lives inside of them question mark like what exactly does that mean like what what what's coming to that is there a way to extract that and we'll just get over it real quick like like are we just gonna go in cage four and they're just cured like, what's yeah. going on there? <laughs> I, I don't know. But it, it is an interesting uh, uh, question. And I think uh, the, the main reports though, that I find the most interesting, and they're kind of things that are introduced in this game, was 100% the Lushu thing, traveling through time, learning more about the Master Masters, especially as you and me both being ones who like the Master Masters and the concept of it all, like back cover, all that kind of jazz. Um, Fascinating, absolutely fascinating. And then also Subject X is also extremely yeah. fascinating to me. Kind of learning more about Axel and Isa and some of the experience with Argadon. Who is this chick? Is it is it Ava? Is it somebody else? Um who, who knows, right? See, I, I really I really love these secret reports. I think these might have been my favorite secret reports we've ever gotten. Yeah. It really added a lot from in my opinion. Granted, I I, I feel like at the end of the day, this information will be maybe more apparent in a future game to an extent. Maybe not all the details of Lushu through the years, passing down his, his Keyblade and watching, <laughs> watching the gazing eye with a close eye. <laughs> yeah. He's gazing his own eyes at the gazing eye. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we got, we got talking there about he will return, which presumably means the Master of Masters. Uh, which is then get, gives even more intrigue to the ending cutscene there of Tokyo and the road figure. There's only one road figure, I think, that I can think of that we don't know the face of yet. And I, yeah. think, I think that's him. I can't, I can't think of anybody else. So, uh, any, any thoughts that you want to add to that after the secret reports uh, or theories or anything like that? I know you had like the Ava theory with Subject X, assuming that still rings true to you. I think it would be interesting to see, like, Subject X, especially if she were to interact with um, Axel and Isa, because obviously they know her, and she sort of disappeared, and even though she disappeared, she seems to have, like, put their lives in a direction of, like, becoming apprentices and trying to find her. Yeah. And that's, that's interesting to me. So... Yeah, so like she had such an impact on them that you know they went in that direction. They like, all right, we're coming up, we're becoming apprentices of these these people that they clearly disagree with because they yeah. had this girl that they cared about locked up down there. Mm -hmm. um, so they definitely there was no compassion there for for the work that they were doing. And if anything, it's disgust. So it's a very different hidden motive that is so interesting, and quite frankly, Syax hides e e like extremely well. Yeah, like, through the organization. Assumedly, he would have so much resentment for Zemnis as a whole for, uh, you know, this 
this girl that they were seeing in there being lost and definitely blaming the researchers for that. Yeah. So it's 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 interesting little hidden motives, if you will. Definitely. But yeah, and then there was a lot of talk of like back cover situations with the Keyblade War. You mentioned the world lines. Uh, so some more more questions here. Yes. Uh, to be had, <laughs> but like I said, there's more games to be had, and uh, not not too much more stuff to go through necessarily. But it, it'll be a start. <laughs> it'll be a start. I thought it was interesting, you know, that Lushu talked about the ages, centuries, decades, years, however long it was. Like, he listed all those things that he'd have to body top, essentially. And it's that was like before he did it, so he didn't know how many years he did that. But then he later says, through the ages, again, how long is ages? Is this defined mm -hmm. by like the progress of civilization, I guess. I, I don't know. That's how, like, we do it. Like, the, the Renaissance, the medieval age, or whatever. Yeah. So it just makes you think of things like that. So it's very unclear, but I, I really do think it would be something like centuries, if you ask me, personally, but... It definitely sounds like it. <laughs> it's not like it would have been, oh, it's been 40 years, because if it had been 40 years, then a lot more people would sort of know about... Keyblade Wars and all that stuff. So it's definitely it, longer than that. Yeah, and I mean, just imagine how old Lushu is then. Like, it's not like a some time travel thing. Then it would be <laughs> like, this this guy is just an old man. <laughs> Lushu's the one bullying Xehanort in the uh, old age home. <laughs> <laughs> nah, he's too good for that. He just body hops. He, he, he never goes in the old senior home. <laughs> Yeah, he, he owns it. In, he body hops into like one of Sandor's like, um, like the old people there, and just like bullies Sandor in that body, and then hops back. <laughs> That's what he lives for—is bullying Sandor. <laughs> yes. All right, everybody. Well, I think we will wrap this one up here. Retire KH3 for now. Like I said, DLC that will be coming. Uh, but the next thing that we will tackle will be uh the mobile games. So. Stay tuned for that. Like I said, hopefully you guys, you know, at least I know a lot of you guys out there do not like it. Again, I I would like you guys to at least try it if you guys can, if you guys are willing to do so, um, because I will try my very best to make it as, you know, digestible, I guess, as possible and enjoyable as I can. I know there's only so much to do if you already have like a preconceived notion about it, but um, I, I, I'm really going to try my best. I know Rain and me both seem to really enjoy that storyline a lot. So I can guarantee we're going to have a good time and we're going to have fun. And that hopefully, you know, maybe our fun will run off, rub off on you or at least make the experience enjoyable. So uh, I, hope, I hope to see you guys there. Um, if not, then I suppose, you know, catch back to the DLC. But yeah, so I, I also just want to, you know, thank everybody as well, because like I said, this is the end of phase one. We've been through a, a long journey here and there's been several of you out there who have joined us through this this whole kind of adventure and. Um, though I know we're still not done, you know, it's 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 a big milestone here, I would say, with KH3. A big, huge climax. And uh, I just want to thank you guys all very much for, for joining us through this experience and through all of our inside jokes and you know, all of our <laughs> questionable commentary sometimes <laughs> about uh, questionable. <laughs> foreplay and things like that. <laughs> Uh, yeah. But hopefully you guys had fun with it like 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 we did and um, of course thank you Rain for, for joining thus far through it uh, getting all the way through phase one and uh, joining me in this experience and having such a strong connection with the characters that I could have only hoped for so you you've, you've really cared about the games and like for for you guys out there outside of recording like we still we talk about her or we'll we'll be like oh this is like like Sora or like man Sora's such a good character and stuff like obviously it's spoiler free we don't like oh let's talk about this or theory craft or whatnot um it's just kind of in passing or, or bringing up jokes that we have about the characters especially like Mickey Mouse that the rat is a <laughs> is a huge topic of conversation for us uh, yeah but very, very fun and enjoyable, and uh, I would—I don't think I would have had that experience without Rain here. So, um, 
It is the people, both you guys in the comments, who have helped made jokes with us, and Rain herself. Just the conversation and the chemistry between um, all of us that just kind of uh, made this experience what it is. So, <laughs> long-winded explanation later. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> you guys are awesome. <laughs> They can't verbalize it. They can write it in the comments if they feel like it. But someone should say thank you to you. So thank you, because you put a lot of time into the Kingdom Hearts and the way you format it and the way you like, oh, I want to do this first and then it will explain this and the way you've laid it out. And then obviously asking me to join you has been lovely and I've enjoyed it because it's we were good friends before, like we, we got along, but this has really mm -hmm. become a part of the friendship, which is great because this game's about friendship. <laughs> <laughs> so it yeah. works. So thanks. Just uh, thanks for watching Zombo's videos and having fun and joining him and me. <laughs> yeah, it's been an absolute blast. I appreciate you guys all so much. Uh, thank you guys. So and again, <laughs> it's like I'm doing an outro. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I don't know what you're saying. I'll shut up. <laughs> uh, thank you guys all so much for watching. Like I said, I hope to see you guys in the next one and continue in the phase two. It'll be a lot of fun. Excited to see uh, Rain's reactions to things. And uh, excited to see comments from you guys as well on how things go. And especially uh, comments on the end of this game here. Um, I'm really looking forward to that. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed um, some of the tips that I gave in this game as well. Hopefully, you find some usefulness in at least somebody out there. And. Uh, yeah, so uh, thank you again. Big, huge thank you again to everybody out there. And I will see, well, we'll see you guys in the next one. Bye, everybody. <laughs>